this. There's lots of people finding the slope correctly. That's fantastic. To find the slope, you have to solve that equation for y. To find the slope, you have to solve the equation for y. So when I look at this problem, the first thing I'm noticing is, great, I have a point. That's fantastic. We, we're, we have to be given one to do the problem anyway. Next thing I look for is my slope. It doesn't just say up there, slope of blank. It doesn't give me two points, so I cannot use a slope formula. All I can do is solve this equation for y. Now, the way we do that, hopefully you did this as well, subtract 3x from both sides. Like that, right? You did that far? Now, is our slope negative 3? No. no. Why not? Why not? Can you see how people would make that mistake, though? They just go, oh, the slope's negative 3 because I have x over there now. We can't do that. Why? Because y is by itself. That's right. Slope intercept says y is by itself. So if we just stop here, we don't have the right slope yet. What you do have to do, divide everything by that 4. If I divide that by 4, watch carefully, I have to divide this by 4, and I have to divide that by 4. Everything gets divided by 4. Now, these 4s are gone, giving us that y. Over here, you need to know something about negative 3x over 4. You can also write it as negative 3 fourths x. That's fine. Plus 1 fourth. Would you raise your hand feel okay with getting this far, please? Good. All right, that's fantastic. Are you able to find your slope in this case? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I want you to notice something because people get kind of hung up on this on, on the test. Does this or this have anything to do with this problem? No. Anything at all? The only reason why we're using this is to get a slope. That's it. That's it. These numbers do not come back again at all. It's just for finding the slope. Not to have your understanding that. Just for the slope. That's it. What is your slope here? Negative 3 fourths. So here's our slope. We're looking for the parallel slope. I want you to write that out so that I see that you understand we're looking for parallel here, and then you give me the slope. This will be partial credit on your test. So parallel slope, what is the parallel slope to negative 3 fourths, ladies and gentlemen? Negative 3 fourths. Yeah, it should be exactly the same. Parallel means the same. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, what two things do you need to find the equation of any line? What two things? Point. Do you have a point? Yeah. Do you have a slope? Yeah. Sweet, let's do it. How do we find the equation of a line now? What do we use now? Yeah, it gives it to you, right? It says you got a point slope, use point slope. Point slope is this one. Y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. We just have to fill that in appropriately. Can you please tell me what is my y1 in this case? Where are you getting the negative 3? Okay, so this is x1. This is y1. So we have y. What, what are we going to put next? Plus 3. And again, where we're getting the plus 3 is we're really doing minus negative 3 equals negative 3 fourths. And then x minus x1, that's going to be x minus 8. By show of hands, how many people made it to the slope at least? How many people have made it down to this far? That's good. That's very good. Let's see if we made it the rest of the way. Because we are dealing with some fractions here, right? Some people get kind of hung up on some fractions. This isn't really the scope of the class for me to go over how to multiply and add fractions again. But if you need help on that, please come and see me, uh, math lab or office hours, and I'll help you with this stuff, okay? So the fra I'm kind of expecting you to be able to do the fractions. That's, you know, that's the pre-algebra stuff that, that we're supposed to be able to do a couple classes ago. But I understand that some people have trouble with that. So this will be y plus 3. We know minus negative is a plus. On the right-hand side, we're going to distribute. And what you're going to get when you distribute is negative 3 fourths x. And then you're going to get plus negative 3 fourths times 8. That's negative 3 fourths times 8 over 1. You can do it uh, 24 over 4, or you can simplify as you go. In any case, you're going to get plus 6 at the very end of this. Did you get plus 6? Very okay, good. And lastly, we're going to subtract 3.
and we're going to have our equation. That's our function. Did you make it down that far? Good, that's really good. I hope you'll feel okay about doing this problem, with parallel at least. That's good. Could you graph this if I asked you to? Yep. Mm -hmm. What's your y-intercept? That means you go up three. What's your slope? And from that point, not the origin, from that point, you'd go up or down, which one? Down. Down how many? Three. And over to the? Right. How many? Four. So we'd have, we'd go up one, two, three. We'd put a point there, we'd go down three, one, two, three, over four, put another point, graph our line. Now, we've done two examples of parallel. Let's see how to do perpendicular and see what changes on this. So we're going to have the same question. Find the equation of a line containing 3 fourths and perpendicular to that given, given equation. Of course, we're given a point like we always are. And of course, we're not given two points, so we can't find the slope. We're given another equation, so we have to find the slope that way. Let's go ahead and find the slope. To find the slope, what are we going to do first, ladies and gentlemen? That was just lady. That wasn't ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're not quite done yet. What's the last step we have to do on this problem? If we divide by 4, that means everywhere. And we're going to get y equals, let's simplify some fractions as well. Negative 2x over 4 is how much? Negative. Plus 5 fourths. Again, don't be afraid of this. That's not even going to come back in your problem. You're not even going to use that. All we did. This whole process for is to find that number right there. That number right there is our slope. So, if we were looking for, hopefully you'll be listening up here, if we were looking for parallel lines, we'd take exactly that slope. Now we're not, because when we read this question carefully, it says, oh, oh, I'm looking for perpendicular. So what we're going to do, why, we, why I had you write this and why I had you write that, we're going to also write perpendicular over here. We're going to write perpendicular slope. That's why I made clear that I, I showed you that we were using this slope, not necessarily the one that we're finding directly from there, because sometimes it's going to change. With parallel, yeah, it's the same. It's perfect. But with perpendicular, if our slope is negative one-half, what is the perpendicular slope to negative one-half? Two. Good. So we flip it and we change the sign. Perpendicular slope is two over one. Or you can just put two. So this one translates down to positive 2 over 1. We're going to use 2. Hey, do we have a point? Yep. Yeah. Do we have a slope? Yeah. Are we going to use this slope or this slope? The original one or the perpendicular one? Perpendicular. Definitely, because that's why we did this step for parallel and this step for parallel. Now we're doing this step for perpendicular because that's the one we're going to use in our equation now. So we have y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, and that 2 is what's going into our slope. We use that one. The only reason why we solved that was to find our slope and then find the perpendicular of that. Well, let's see if we can do this. We're going to have y, y minus what? Good, because from up here at our point, that's x1, y1. y minus 4 equals, we know our slope is 2, x minus 3. That's what worked out kind of nice for us. All we've got to do now is distribute, maybe add a four to both sides, get this in slope-intercept form, and then think about graphing it if that's what the problem asks you to do. So we've distributed. We'll add four to both sides. Ladies and gentlemen, what's our uh, y-intercept here? We'd go down two. What is your slope? Two, two, two. two over one. one. That means you would go up or down? Okay. Up two. Up two over one, one to the right. Draw your line. That'd be just fine. Would you like to try one of your own? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This involves some fractions, I think. But well, we should be able to handle those. So we'll do it the same way we just did. Mm.
So same thing. Find the equation of the line containing. That's what the dot, dot, dot means. Mm the same process we just talked about. Identify that you have a point. Of course we have to be given one. Identify your slope. If it's not given to you and you're not given two specific points, well, then you're going to have to use that equation to find the slope. So do that. Notice whether we're talking about parallel or perpendicular. Write the appropriate slope to that and then use point slope because that's what you'll have. So while this one looked exactly like the one I just erased, same point, same equation, it's going to be done differently, right? Because we're looking for perpendicular rather than for parallel. Well, let's see what we get when we solve this for our slope. First thing, since we're not given a slope, we do need to use our equation. We will subtract 3x just like we did before. We'll get 4y equals negative 3x plus 1. Also like we had before on this equation, I probably shouldn't have erased it was up there. Divide by 4 on every single term, and you get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 1 fourth. Would you raise your hand if you made it that far? Very good, okay. Can you identify your slope here? Okay, good. Now we look back at our problem and we look at whether Mr. Leonard asked you for a parallel slope or a perpendicular slope. In our case, I asked you for. Definitely. So we're going to write down here perpendicular slope. 